Hey there, good to see you. Today we are taking a look at Pure Raw 3, a brand new version of DxO's raw photo pre-processing utility that uh, applies optical corrections by removing things like vignette, distortion, chromatic aberration, and it also uses some rather sophisticated denoising technology to remove noise from your raw photos, but without removing texture and without removing detail. If you are completely new to this software, you've never seen it before, you don't know what it is or what it does or you know what I'm talking about, let me show you an example. Okay, so in front of you right now is a straight out of camera raw file taken seven years ago using an old Canon 6D DSLR. Well, old of course by today's standards, but back then it was a relatively new camera. And this shot here was taken inside of an old uh, cathedral in the historic district of Lyon, France. Beautiful space with loads of texture and detail and ornament, which, you know, makes it perfect for uh, for a video like this one. But it's also perfect because in order to take this image, I had to raise my ISO all the way up to 4000 because it was dim and dark inside of there and I couldn't use a tripod and I'm shooting handheld. Well, that high ISO just injected all kinds of noise that you can see, especially up here at the top of the frame. And it just really ruined a lot of the, the detail and texture. That's what noise does. Noise just has a corrosive effect on, on digital images. But DxO Pure Raw 3 was designed to help fix some of these things. So let's take a look at what it can do. So this is, again, the original raw file here. And then this one here is a DxO Pure Raw 3. Now, if you're familiar with Pure Raw, this uh, image here was processed using the Deep Prime algorithm. But then one layer up, I have the new uh, Deep Prime XD, which is a new algorithm that's been added to Pure Raw 3. And XD stands for extra detail. It's pretty subtle. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this difference on YouTube. Maybe you see a little something different between them. Uh, this is XD and this is Deep Prime, Deep Prime XD. <laughs> Again, it's it's pretty subtle. The Lightroom version just looks kind of it looks rather soft. It looks kind of glassy, and it just doesn't retain as anywhere near as much detail uh, as the pure raw version. Now, the reason these look so different is because the noise reduction tool in Lightroom Classic, which is the same tool used by Lightroom and Camera Raw as well, that tool is well, it's not particularly smart. But the noise reduction in Pure Raw is. Pure Raw, when it's demosaicing that raw data and it is uh, detecting and removing noise from it, it is also going in and rebuilding detail. It's able to recognize where the details and textures in the image are and then work to reform and reconstitute those, those missing details that otherwise would be, you know, obliterated and smoothed over using a more conventional noise reduction tool. So not only is Pure Raw 3 denoising and improving detail and, and texture, but it's also applying optical corrections. It is removing vignette. It is removing some of the distortion caused by shooting wide angle. And it's also removing some of the chromatic aberration. And I bet if we come up here and look at these stained glass windows, uh, let me turn off the, the Pure Raw 3 version. Yeah, there is some chromatic aberration. Anytime you have an area where there's like, you know, high contrast, like super bright light uh, up against something else. You typically get some purple fringing like you see here. You can also see there's a, uh, some noise uh, in the interior as well. So let me turn on the Pure Raw 3 version. And yeah, the chromatic aberration has been accounted for. It's been removed. And this has also been uh, denoised as well. Now, I want to show you something else really interesting. Check this out. So this is a RAW file shot using a DJI Mavic 2 drone. This is an aerial shot. And this image here was corrected using Adobe Lightroom Classic. But then this one was corrected using Pure RAW. It almost uh, seems like it's like a millimeter or two wider in focal length compared to the Lightroom version. And what's happening here, I believe, is that Lightroom Classic is just, it's just being more aggressive when cropping the image after fixing the distortion, whereas the distortion correction in Pure Raw is doing a better job cropping and handling that distortion so that more of the image, more of the data, you know, captured by the sensor in the drone is, is actually included uh, in the image. And this is, you know, this is part of the reason why I, you know, process all of my RAW files captured using uh, drones in Pure Raw. 
Okay, let's take a look at another example. Some of you will recognize this. Another cathedral in uh, in Europe. This one is La Sagrada Familia, designed by Gaudi in the beautiful city of Barcelona. You can see, you know, Gaudi's crazy, insane, wonderful, imaginative architecture all over the city of Barcelona. And this is the interior of the uh, cathedral here, which is still under construction, I believe. I mean, they've been working on this thing for like decades, and you know, someday they're they're actually going to finish it. But let's take a look at the denoising. So let's come up here and this is a good place to do it, similar to the other image. And let me show you denoising in Lightroom, which is this layer here. And let me just toggle that on and off again. So again here, I raised uh, noise reduction until I got rid of the noise in the columns and these flat areas in the ceiling up here. And then I raise the detail slider to retain as much detail as possible. And well, this is what we get from Lightroom. But now let's ch check out uh, deep prime denoising in pure raw three. And <laughs> yeah, and, um, and then this one here is uh, deep prime XD in pure raw three, which is that new denoising mode. And honestly, for me, there's really very little difference between XD and deep prime. So, um, so yeah, there's that. And actually, this version here has been sharpened by pure raw. And I have another version that. Uh, has not been sharpened. So this is without any sharpening applied in Pure Raw 3. I just disabled it altogether. Uh, this is Deep Prime XD without any sharpening. And uh, let's just keep that one. So Deep Prime XD, no sharpening. And if we compare it to uh, noise <laughs> reduction in Adobe Lightroom Classic, sorry, I'm laughing, but it's just like the difference is just so pronounced. I mean, it truly is just, it, it just feels completely different up here at the top of the frame and let's uh, back out a little bit more and yeah I mean pure raw just you know especially with this image here I mean it really is just doing some some pretty fantastic things bringing back some of the texture and detail with some of these architectural elements in the shot yeah I mean an image like this is just you know absolutely perfect and the other one was too now in case you're curious to know I don't use pure raw with you know every single raw image that that I create because that would just be far too time consuming and I only use it with you know like images that I truly care about like the ones that are important to me that I want to you know squeeze the best possible you know image quality out of or if it happens to be an image that has some kind of technical issue like elevated noise you know because they were shot you know handheld using a high ISO but another reason I don't use it for everything is because the raw files the new DNG files produced by pure raw are three times larger than the straight out of camera raw files created by my camera now some of you may be thinking well just get rid of the original raw files right you no longer need those if you have optimized versions that look much better but that would be a mistake because think about it photo editing software and technology is constantly evolving it is constantly improving i mean just over the past year all the new artificial intelligence tools that have been coming around and had i you just deleted all of my original Canon RAW files from seven years ago and optimized them using something else, well, I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't be able to use them in pure RAW today, seven years later after they were originally created to create better versions of them. And who knows? I mean, seven years from now, I might be able to do it again. I might be able to create even better images then. But in order to do so, the original raw files have to be there. You have to have those original raw files from your camera with the metadata in them so that software knows what to do with them. So that software recognizes the files as being from a particular camera and a particular lens, and they know exactly what to do. So hold on to those original raw files. Don't delete them. Okay, let's change gears now and let's take a look at the user interface of Pure Raw 3, how you use it, and how the software fits into your photo editing workflow. Let's check it out. So if you use Adobe Lightroom Classic to edit your raw files like I do, you can come up here to File, plug in Extras, and then select Process with DxO Pure Raw 3. And when you do that, you're then going to see this modal here. Okay, so let me just process this really quick so you can see how it behaves. So I'm gonna click Start Processing, and it's gonna start working on this DNG file here. And so now we have a newly generated DNG file that has been automatically imported into Adobe Lightroom Classic. And you can see up here, it says DxO D Prime XD in the file format. So I know the difference is between this DNG file and the original DNG file. Now you can also use Pure Raw 3 outside of Adobe Lightroom Classic by 
going to your original uh, raw files on your local hard drive, right clicking on one. And then here you'll see, uh, this is in Mac OS, but it'll be the same on Windows if you're a Windows user. And you can choose between the different denoising algorithms here and choose uh, which file formats you want. Now there's also this option down here that says process with standalones settings. This is referring to the standalone application that you see over here. And effectively what that does is just repeat and reuse the same uh, processing settings you used last time in the standalone app. Okay, let's grab a whole bunch of raw files here. I'm gonna drag them into pure raw three. Then they're all going to appear here in the light box view, about 131 images total. So let's add all these to the queue for a batch process. So let's click on add to queue. Uh, let's just keep it at deep prime, leave all these options as they are. And here is the queue interface. Now we can drag, you know, items into different uh, positions, whatever priority that we want. We can also right click on an image and say, you know, I want you to process this one next or, you know, move it somewhere else in the queue. And then when you're ready to go and ready to start processing, we just click this play button down here. Now, once this is going, we can actually hide the queue, come back and we can do other things in here. We could drag in more files if we want to. This Lightbox interface here remains uh, editable and remains usable while uh, jobs are processing. Now, I have to be honest here and tell you that I have somewhat mixed feelings about the queue. I mean, I think it's I think it's a nice feature. I think it's a good thing to add and it may be, you know, very helpful for some people. But for me and my workflow and how I use Pure Raw, it doesn't really do anything for me because I am more selective with the raw files that I encode. I just encode them one at a time and I only use Pure Raw with the with the photos that I truly care about, like the photos that I'm going to make a print of or that I'm going to put on my website, something like that, or photos that you know, exhibit issues like high ISO levels and high noise, like, you know, we talked about or looked at just a second ago, is not the kind of thing that I would just dump an entire SD card into and start processing. What I wish DxO had worked on for Pure Raw 3, instead of adding a queue, would be a better live preview. You cannot see this until after a raw file has been generated. So if you're trying to squeeze like the best possible image quality out of your raw file, well, that means you have to generate multiple versions, each using different settings, and then compare and contrast them against one another, and then delete the ones that you don't want. See a live version of it so you know what it is you're going to get, and then click export, or then add to the queue, as opposed to you know, everything, you know, having to be exported first. That's what I wish DxO had focused their time and attention on, not adding a file queue, which to me doesn't really solve any particular problem. So personally, I really do like the optics modules that DxO has custom built that are uh, that are part of Pure Raw. And for me, at least, I always feel like their optics modules are superior. They just always seem to produce, you know, better distortion handling, uh, better results when it comes to vignette. Finally, there is an option in Pure Raw 3 to just disable sharpening altogether. This was honestly one of my biggest criticisms about earlier versions of Pure Raw because I don't, I just don't believe in applying sharpening this early in the processing stage. Like I would much rather apply sharpening at the very end when I know what it is I'm doing with the image, you know, whether that's making a print exporting for a website, posting on social media, what have you, because you want to use varying levels of sharpness and you don't want to be, you know, applying aggressive sharpness, you know, this early and then double sharpening it again later. So I love being able to just turn it off altogether. If you have older Lightroom catalogs full of old digital raw files like I do, uh, Pure Raw can do some pretty fantastic things with them. It doesn't always produce superior results. I think I mentioned this earlier, but if you are shooting with like a, a modern mirrorless camera, um, you know, like that has a good sensor in it that uh, doesn't really need as much correction, well, uh, Pure Raw may not be as valuable to you. Like it, you may not see that big of a difference between Pure Raw and other applications. It really is with, with older, images and raw images shot using just medium grade cameras where pure raw can make a bigger difference and can produce better qualitative results 
than what other raw editing applications can achieve. You can get it for both uh, Mac OS and Windows. You can download a free trial. The link is down below in the video description. Be sure to check that out. If you learned something new about Pure Raw today and you enjoyed this video, please take a moment and give the video a thumbs up down below. It really would help me out. And while you're down there, if you want to hang out, do this again in the future, be sure to subscribe to this channel as well. That is it for me today, everyone. I will see you next time.